Following a delay of exactly one year, the uh, Olympic Games is finally about to kick off in Tokyo on Friday 23rd of July. We take a look at um, the preview here for the uh, doubles categories and uh, I'll also give you my view on who I think will finish on the podium. Making a full tournament prediction is always difficult. It's even more difficult now following the pandemics. We don't know exactly where uh, the players stand. And I think that makes it all that more interesting that um, it's the first time in uh, 16 months that we have all the best players in the world uh, gathered together for a badminton tournament. So one of the things that um, we try to gauge is uh, how has this affected um, the different pairings. Uh, some young pairs have uh, had time to gain experience, get better, practice more. Perhaps some more experienced pairs, they've used the time to uh, get their body ready, free of injuries and uh, really enjoyed the uh, time to where they don't have to play tournaments to qualify for the Olympic Games. The qualification period, the one year previous to the uh, Olympic Games is normally a very, very hectic period where the players compete almost nonstop in order to qualify for the Olympics. So that's not the case, obviously, this time. So it's going to be a little bit different. But without uh, much further ado, then uh, let's uh, get to it. In the doubles category, each, each discipline is split into four groups of four pairs. One pair is um, seeded and two pairs progress to the knockout stage. The knockout draw has not been uh, conducted yet. That will only be made after the conclusion of the group stage play. So let's take a look at um, group A in uh, the mixed doubles with the double world champions Zhang Siwei and uh, Huang Yachong as the top seeds in the mixed doubles discipline. They're in group with uh, Seo Sung Jae and Che Yu Jung of Korea, um, tabling in peak from the Netherlands and then El Gamal and Hani from Egypt. As we can see here on the uh, head to head, um, <laughs> Zhang Siwei and Huang Yachong, they're actually down 1-0 against uh, Tabling and Peak. That's the only pair in the world they have a negative record against. And uh, it's actually the last match on international level that uh, Jiang Siwei and Huang Yachong played. That was the second round in All England 2020, just before uh, pretty much the whole world closed down uh, due to the corona pandemic. Seo Sung Jae and uh, Che Yu Jung, we've seen them play some really good matches in uh, uh, Thailand in January here in uh, 2021, but uh, we must remember that there was no Chinese participation in uh, those tournaments and neither uh, any Japanese participation in those tournaments. They have a terrible record against um, Jiang Siwei and uh, Huang Ya Chong, so it looks like the uh, top seats should be uh, safely through to the uh, knockout stage as I think that they're going to revenge their defeat to Tabling and Peak from the Netherlands. So uh, there's one spot up for grabs uh, in the second place I believe in this group and um, that's going to be a battle between the Koreans and uh, the uh, pair from the Netherlands. Uh, Koreans are 1-0 up in head-to-heads and that's actually uh, later on in that same All England tournament last year where they uh, defeated Tabling and Peak. I believe the uh, Koreans are going to um, are going to uh, take that uh, second spot and qualify for the knockout stage. Um, I've seen Tabling and Peak in some of the Danish league matches here and uh, I think whilst they're in good shape I don't think they are in exactly the same shape they were in at All England uh, back in uh, 2020. And from the schedule you can see that it's a very very important match already on day one of uh, competition that's on Saturday uh, in Japan 20 minutes past 10 uh, in the morning Seo Sung Jae and Che Yu Jung they will take on Robin Tabling and Selena Peak in what I believe to be the crucial match of uh, this group A. 
The clear favorites in uh, Group B is uh, Puavara Nucro and uh, Tera Chanachai, the third seeds in this tournament, but also the winners of three back-to-back -back tournaments in the bubble in their home country, Thailand, back in January. Uh, they have a good record against um, both the two European pairs, uh, the Canadian pair with uh, Josephine Wu and um, Joshua Herbert Yu hasn't uh, played any of um, these three other pairs in the group. So Thailand pair, heavy favorites to uh, to top the group in my opinion. They've lost one match against uh, Tom Shikel and uh, Delphine De Rue. That was uh, Indonesian Masters uh, the first time they met since then. They won the two following encounters. So it looks like uh, uh, it's going to be uh, Europe and, and Canada to um, to play it out for the uh, final qualification spot for the knockout stage. Um, I have the two European pairs as reasonably uh, strong favorites to uh, to win their matches against uh, Herbert Yu and uh, Wu. So again, the uh, all European matchup already on uh, day one uh, could be very, very crucial. 9.40 uh, Saturday morning uh, and that match could actually decide um, who is progressing to the uh, knockout stage. We can see that um, Ellis and Smith, they have um, a, a comfortable uh, lead in the head to hits. They have never lost to um, Shikel and uh, Del Rey and also they have more Olympic experience. Marcus Ellis, of course, a uh, bronze medalist in men's doubles in, in Rio, where uh, Lauren Smith also was uh, participating in uh, the women's doubles discipline. So uh, it would be easy to um, to favor the English in, in that encounter, but we also must uh, remember that um, uh, both Shikel and, and Derry, they've done excellent uh, uh, over the past uh, period here. They're really an up and coming pair. So I think that's gonna be a very, very interesting match uh, to uh, progress from the group stage. I, um, I take a chance and go with an upset here uh, because I see it as an upset if uh, Shikel and uh, Derry, they uh, progress through the group stage, but I think they're going to um, upset the English. Uh, there's been a lot of um, um, discussion and quarrel in the English camp uh, ahead of these Olympic Games and I think that might influence Ellis and Smith in a negative way. Group C is looking very very interesting as uh, Praveen Jordan and uh, Milati Octavianti is the fourth seeds in the Olympic tournament but Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Hikashino, the home favorites, they are the fifth on the uh, ranking list that um, decided the seeding. So that means they are the highest non-seeded pair in the tournament. Now, it's very interesting and I, I foresee a huge battle between uh, these two pairs to top the group, which would then ensure them not to meet any of the group winners from uh, the other three groups in the mixed doubles tournament. So that's a really, really interesting match that I'm looking forward to, but I'm also looking forward to see them against uh, the Danes, Christiansen and Boyer. Jordan and Octavianti, they might be out to revenge their fellow countrymen, Gloria Vijaya and Hafiz Faisal. They were the ones who had to surrender their spot at the Olympics and uh, it went to uh, Boyer and uh, Christiansen. That's the only change between two nations from the uh, uh, rankings as of um, 17th March 2020 and to the final uh, ranking here in uh, uh, 15th of June 2021. So not a lot changed in terms of who qualified for the Olympics despite of some Olympic qualification tournaments being staged. Only three places were tipped, two of them were within the same country, but Christiansen and Boyer they uh, got the last spot in uh, the mixed doubles due to Ellis and Smith moving up one rank to number eight and thus Vijaya and uh, Faisal could not go to the Olympics. So it's going to be interesting to see if Perrine Jordan and Octavianti can um, get uh, sort of like Indonesian revenge over the Danes and um, and uh, win that match. They are of course uh, heavy favorites to do it, but um, they've played some close uh, games uh, in their previous two meetings. 
The same goes for the matches between Watanabe and um, Higashino and uh, and Christiansen and Boyer. It's also been a couple of close games. So the Danes are uh, playing uh, the role as the underdogs in, in this group. But um, that's not always a bad uh, position to come from in, uh, in Olympic Games where there's a little nervousness or a lot of nervousness, actually. It's, uh, it's a tournament that's only every fourth year. And... Um, you know that this chance is uh, only occurring maybe two or three times uh, in your lifetime if you're extremely lucky. So uh, looking forward to uh, to see those matches. Uh, uh, I think uh, the, the battle for uh, the initiative at the net is going to be really, really important. And if the Danes are to uh, stand a chance of qualifying, I think Alexander Boyer needs to be really, really sharp at the net. She's going to get competition from Arisa Hikashino and um, and uh, Melati Octavianti. And, and one of the big question marks is as well, how uh, is the hall playing? Is it a slow playing uh, hall or uh, is it more uh, towards a, uh, a normal playing conditions with um, good speed of shuttles and, and stuff like that? Olympic venues tend to be a little bit slow playing. It tends to be really, really good playing conditions, but a little bit to the slow side. And um, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I have to say I don't know who it figure uh, who it favors here. Uh, both Praveen Jordan and Matthias Christiansen are hard hitters. I think Jordan's um, smash is uh, stronger than Christiansen's, and also a bit more unpredictable. I think Christiansen moves um, a little bit better than uh, Praveen Jordan. But we also saw that uh, Praveen Jordan has. Um, experience from the Olympic tournament in Rio where they lost out in the quarterfinal to um, the gold medalist also from Indonesia Nasir and uh, uh, Ahmad so uh, very very uh, interesting uh, group C and uh, as we can see the schedule it starts out with uh, Watanabe and Higashino uh, against the boy and Christiansen nine o'clock Saturday morning they're opening the Olympic tournament the last group, Group D, is uh, headed by Wang Yiliu and Huang Dongping from China. Uh, and that's also a very, very interesting group because uh, they're part with um, the reigning uh, Olympic silver medalist uh, Chan Peng Soon and Go Liu Ying from Malaysia, as well as uh, Tan Chong Man and Tsi um, Yung Suet from uh, Hong Kong and Lamsfus and Hertrich from Germany. Now, um, the thing is here that uh, Wang Yilu and uh, Huang Dongping, they've obviously played very well uh, when um, when they're at their best. It's been like um, Jiang Siwei and uh, Huang Yachong, they've only lost like 15 matches in their career. And when they uh, eventually lose out on a match, it's like Huang and uh, Wang, they're there to win the tournament. So China still um, takes the win. Whether that will be the case also in, in these Olympics, that remains to be seen, but I have them as the favorites to uh, to top the group. Then there's the uh, reigning uh, Olympic silver medalist, uh, Chen Peng Soon and uh, Go Liu Ying. Um, there's a lot of, um, of uh, media that has them uh, progressing far in this tournament, but uh, I'll go against that. Uh, as we can see, the uh, head-to-head -head against um, uh, Tang Chun Man and um, and seeing sweat is not in favor of the Malaysians. They won the first encounter, but have lost uh, four straights since then. And uh, since the Olympics, uh, Go and, and um, Chan, they've um, gone independent. And uh, up to the Olympics here, they've been practicing in the uh, uh, national uh, team with the Malaysian national team because of the pandemic. So uh, there's been no uh, problems in inspiring and, and so far. But I still feel that um, the Hong Kong pair might be able to uh, once again turn the tables of uh, the Malaysians. It's, uh, it's a long time since we've seen them be uh, consistent. One of the things that, of course, can wreak havoc to uh, this prediction is that we haven't really been able to uh, gauge where uh, Tang and, and Si is standing. Um, They've also been on, on lockdown in, in Hong Kong ever since um, the All England back in 2020. And uh, that is indeed a question mark. 
Lambsfuss and Hattrich, uh, the last pair in, in this group here, um, they have a losing record against all their opponents, but uh, I think they've gained self-confidence. They won the um, Denmark Open Super 750 back in um, October 2020. I know there wasn't a lot of Asian competition in that tournament, but still victories gives you confidence. And uh, we know that uh, they play a very, very uh, strong conceptual uh, mixed doubles play. So uh, maybe they can be the ones that uh, stir th things up in this group here. Uh, I still think that uh, Wang and uh, Huang from China, they will uh, top the group. And uh, my uh, prediction is that um, Tang Chunman and Tsing Sweat will take the uh, second uh, qualifying spot for the knockout draw. Mm -hmm. So here's a summary of my uh, predictions in the uh, group stage. A lot can uh, happen and a lot can be different, especially if um, number one and two is uh, switched in some of the groups that totally uh, alters the complexity for the knockout stage. That's why I also uh, given a uh, tip for uh, the podium, but in no particular order as uh, the draw for the knockout stage will be very, very uh, decisive uh, in that manner. Uh, if um, I should uh, choose one of the uh, medalist pairs that I've chosen here to be the more unsecure one, I would say it's uh, Huang Dongping and uh, Wang Yi Liu. They've often uh, struggled a little bit, I think, in um, big uh, championships. And if they should fall out, then uh, I would uh, look to uh, Watanabe and Higashino and Seo Sung Jae and uh, uh, Che Yu Jung. The reason why I've left them out is that uh, both uh, male players, they play in uh, two categories. And I feel that um, that might be really, really challenging. The 29th of July, there's... Um, semi-finals in um, mixed doubles and uh, quarterfinals in men's doubles and provided that they're both playing uh, two categories by that time then it might be a really really challenging situation back in rio uh, Zhao yun lei and jang nan the reigning olympic champions then they lost out easily to uh, liliana nasir and tontovi ahmad in the evening session after they played after Jiang Nan and Fu Haifang played a uh, monster of a battle against Kim Ki Jung and um, and Kim Sarang in the morning session where uh, the two uh, Chinese players later to become Olympic champions but they were down 10-2 in the decider and had three match points against them so uh, an emotional roller coaster no doubt uh, for <laughs> Fu Haifang and uh, Jiang Nan back then and the same, I think, could happen for Seo Sung Jae and Yuta Watanabe. So in Group A in uh, in women's doubles, is really looking interesting. The top seeds, Fukushima and uh, Hirota, three times, or three consecutive times, world championship silver medalist, but now top seeded for Olympic gold they're in group with uh, poli and rahayo from indonesia cho and lee from malaysia and chloe birch lawrence smith from uk now uh, fukushima and hirota looks to be in uh, in good shape um, judged by the uh, head to heads um, the last defeat uh, to uh, poli and rahayo was back in uh, 2017 in um, in uh, france and they've got a solid record against both cho and lee and uh, birch and smith so uh, i think the uh, top seats are gonna uh, take the uh, first spot in this group but um, the battle could be between the three other pairs where cho and um, and lee they've actually won the last two encounters against um, gracia poli and uh, abriani rahayu so there's gonna be um, a lot uh, at stake in uh, that match and that also starts out uh, on uh, Saturday uh, at 9 o'clock uh, local Japanese time so what a way to kick off the Olympic tournament now um, Cho and Lee they're not um, safe at all because they have actually uh, lost their only encounter against uh, Birch and, uh, and Smith and that's the only win that Birch and Smith have against any of the Asian pairs who's uh, entered into uh, this tournament here. So it wouldn't be totally out of line if um, 
if we saw uh, Fukushima and Hirota with three wins, and then uh, the second place was uh, decided in a three-way tie between the uh, remaining pairs. Um, I think, though, that um, my pick is still with uh, Poli and uh, Rahayu. I think it might be decided on um, games difference, and I feel that they could have uh, a little advantage uh, in that matter. But uh, it should be noted that um, it's a very open group, uh, or it's at least, in my opinion, very open, who is to um, to uh, follow uh, Fukushima and Hirota on to the knockout stage. Now, Group B in uh, women's double looks a little bit softer for especially the favorites in the group, Mayo Matsumoto and uh, Wakana Nagahara. They're up against uh, Peak and Sane from the Netherlands and Honderich Tsai from Canada, and then... Uh, uh, the African representative uh, Ani uh, and Hosni from Egypt and um, yeah it should be um, smooth sailing for the um, double world champions uh, they have uh, a defeat against uh, Sane and Peak back from 2018 but they won the next two encounters convincingly in um, in straight games so um, I am convinced that they will uh, take the uh, top of um, this group B in women's doubles. Uh, there's, there's always concerns about um, being a favorite, being on home soil and stuff like that. But um, I think that uh, since the introduction of the uh, group stage back in 2012, it's been a whole different uh, complexion to, um, to the Olympic tournament. You no longer have this risk of being one and done if you have um, a challenging draw in a in a knockout uh, draw. Here you have um, the chance to get your game going in in a match, and you can still qualify uh, for um, the knockout stage even if you lose a match in the group stage. We saw back in uh, Rio in the men's doubles where Fu Hai Feng and uh, Jiang Nan came back after finishing second in. Um, in their group and won the title. So uh, I see uh, smooth sailing for uh, Matsumoto and uh, Nakahara. I feel the battle for um, the uh, second place is um, definitely going to be between uh, Cheryl Sain, Selena Peak, and Rachel Honderich and, and Kristen Tsai. And it was a little bit surprising to me when I researched for uh, this preview here that it is actually the Canadians who have a 2 0 head to head lead. And it's a quite uh, convincing victory as well in um, Brazil was uh, one of the victories and uh, I've forgotten where the second was, but it was very convincing. Uh, it also puts a lot of pressure on them, I think, because they will look at this as a good draw and, and see that they have a chance of uh, progressing to um, the uh, quarterfinal uh, knockout stage. But uh, so will Hussein and, and Peak, so uh, that that's gonna be uh, a really, really uh, interesting uh, match we're gonna have and as we've seen with uh, a number of the other interesting matches it's uh, full speed from uh, from the go as that match will uh, will start uh, on saturday the first day of competition um, 20 to 7 in the evening in group c we find one of my dark horses in terms of um, reaching the podium at the tokyo 2020 that is uh, du yue and uh, li yunhui the two young Chinese uh, players, they um, have a little bit of the same um, profile as the silver medalists from 2016, Camilla Rodriguez and Christina Pedersen. Both Du and Lee are uh, skilled mixed doubles players and they can be very lethal in the counter-attacking game. Both are really, really strong on the uh, front court and they're basically um, the only pair in the tournament that plays this type of uh, women's doubles. Well, that's actually not totally true because there is one other pair who can do it and they play them in the first round. That is the Danes, Frogo and uh, Thuisen. Frogo and Thuisen, very successful in the uh, Indonesian Masters back in um, 2019, but since then, bugged by injuries and also, like every other player, hit by the uh, pandemic. So it's gonna be a very interesting uh, uh, first match there in, uh, in the group. But um, yeah, I, I can also see uh, Lee Sohee and Shin Chung Chen uh, the fourth seat being uh, challenged by uh, both um, or 
perhaps mainly by uh, Duye and uh, Li and Hui, who's never actually lost to them. Uh, Li Sohi and Xin Chung Chan, they've never beaten any of the two Chinese pairs in the tournament. The second pair, of course, Chen Ching Chen and uh, Jia Yifan, the second seeds that are in Group D. Now, uh, Fuoco and, um, and Tuzhen, uh, they've lost all four encounters against um, Li and Xin, but um, I mean, Li and Shin, they know that they're, they're not the favorites against Du and uh, and Li, so there could be a lot of nerves in that match on um, Sunday, uh, the 25th of July. The uh, last pair in the group is uh, Sechana Mapasa, the Indonesian-born Australian, and uh, Gronje Somerville. Uh, they haven't played uh, the Chinese or the Danes, but um, they lost uh, three previous encounters to Li and Shin. But we should note that uh, two of those matches have gone the full distance. So maybe they could spring a surprise as well in uh, this very, very interesting Group C in the women's doubles. Number two, five, eight and nine from the qualifying list is uh, gathered together in Group D, which looks like a really, really strong group, a dynamite group, you might say. Uh, it's topped by the um, former world champions Chen Ching Chen and uh, Jia Yifan, who also happens to be the reigning Asian Games uh, champions back from 2018 in uh, Jakarta. I see them as uh, clear favorites to, um, to win this group. Uh, they just have um, a thing when when um, when the big championships are there, and if they're in good shape, then they're a, a lethal uh, opponent to play for the remaining pairs. Um, they could be in a fierce battle with uh, Kim So Young and uh, Kong Hee Young, uh, the Koreans, uh, second um, on the qualifying list from uh, Korea. And the thing about Kim and Kong is that they actually won the last tournament in the Olympic Arena, the Musashino Sports for the Musashino Forest Sports Plaza. Uh, they won that tournament back in 2019, and they've shown uh, good form. Uh, they are both very strong players, both Kim and Kong. Kong not that uh, creative, in in my opinion, but very very solid. So, uh, interesting match uh, ahead uh, there uh, when they play the Chinese. We have the uh, uh, the best uh, European pair, in uh, in my opinion, um, Gabriela Stoyeva and Stephanie Stoyeva. Uh, it's a bit unlucky for them to be drawn in, in this group here, as I feel they might struggle against both the Koreans and the Chinese, and perhaps even against them. Um, uh, Kizihara Kun and uh, Prachongjai, but they have a positive record against uh, the Thai players. 4 3 are they up in the head to heads? So it looks even, but I just feel that the Chinese and, and the Koreans they might have a little bit of an edge here, but um, yeah, a lot is uh, at stake in the uh, in the uh, first round uh, matches where um, the uh, Koreans take on uh, the story of our sisters and uh, Kitty Harakun and Prajong Dai take on uh, Chen Ching Chen and, and Jai Yi Fan. If one of the pairs have a bad day, let's say Chen Ching Chen and Jai Yi Fan should lose the first match to Kitty Harakun and Prajong Dai, then everything is up in the air in, in this group and everybody will be uh, looking over their shoulder and, and see what's uh, coming from uh, the other pairs. One of the things. Um, I like about Chen Ching Chen and Jia Yifan. They, it is that they have a really, really hard hitter in the left-hander, Jia Yifan. She was the deciding factor in uh, the Asian Games back in 2018 when they won the tournament. Suddenly in the semi-final, uh, Jia Yifan caught fire and uh, she was fantastic throughout um, that tournament. It's not the same playing conditions here. I expect them to be a little bit slower, but um, that left-handed smash is still really, really valuable. Uh, so to have a, a weapon like that, a weapon like uh, also the uh, double world champions Matsumoto and uh, Nagahara have in terms of Mayo Matsumoto's strong smash, that is uh, really, really an advantage in a tournament like this. So my prediction is that the Chinese top the group ahead of um, the Korean pair, but this could be a fantastic uh, group to uh, follow through the first uh, three 
uh, four days of um, the competition in Tokyo. So here's a summary of um, my picks in uh, women's doubles to uh, progress to the knockout stage. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of those picks that I'm not too comfortable about. That's uh, Poli and Rahayu in, in group one. It could easily be uh, one of the um, two other pairs that are not mentioned here, uh, either the Malaysians or uh, the pair from Great Britain. In uh, group B with its Selena Peak, Shosain, Honderich and Tsai. Well, that is, uh, it's, it's a game time decision, as they say. Um, I've um, chosen the Canadians here because they've beaten the Dutch pair so uh, convincingly in the previous two encounters, but um, expectations and, um, and um, major uh, nerves might kick in there. Uh, yeah, there might also be um, uh, alterations in terms of finishing first and second in, in um, the two last groups here, but um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I feel that um, there's seven pairs that are a little bit above um, the competition in in the women's doubles and they're all here uh, amongst these uh, eight selections so for the medalists i've chosen um, two chinese pairs and uh, kim and kong and and that's of course surprising um, it's even surprising to myself that i haven't chosen any of the japanese pairs um, i haven't chosen uh, matsumoto and nakahara because uh, they have a terrible record against um, Korean opposition and I feel there's a good chance that um, uh, if, if this holds true that the Koreans finish second in their groups and uh, and Matsumoto and Nakahara uh, finish on top of their group then they have um, a 66 percent chance of uh, drawing a Korean pair in the uh, quarterfinal and uh, I, I don't think they can um, I'm not sure at least that they can uh, withstand or uh, live up to that challenge. Fukushima and Hirota, um, they would be uh, my outsiders to uh, to pip one of those um, that I've chosen for uh, the podium. They are definitely a strong pair and they're consistent. They've shown that uh, over and over again in the uh, World Championships, the Asian Games and so on. Um, but um, I feel that... Um, these three pairs that I've chosen, they um, either they are uh, more um, solid in terms of uh, defense and uh, and um, yeah, Kim and Kong, perhaps very much like uh, Fukushima and, and Hirota. Um, so perhaps that's the one I would uh, change if I uh, if I had to but um, I feel the two Chinese pairs they are good at scoring points I think that's going to be um, a thing here in um, in Tokyo so uh, that's why I've chosen them for my podium picks in women's double in men's doubles group a the top seeds Kevin Sukamulio and Marcus Fernaldi Gideon from Indonesia they uh, could seem to have a tough group. I don't agree. I think they have a really, really good group, a group that suits them so well. They have um, good records against uh, Li and Wang, and uh, especially against Ranki Reddy and uh, Shetty. Haven't played um, Lane and Wendy from uh, Great Britain, who were uh, selected ahead of um, the reigning bronze medalist, Ellis and Langridge, very surprisingly. So I actually think that um, Gideon and Sukamulio, they're quite content with uh, this group here. They've always beaten Wang Chilin and uh, Li Yang in straight games, and only once in their eight encounters has um, Shetty and Ranki Reddy managed to take a game of the two Indonesians. Now, Shetty and Ranki Reddy, they have uh, a new coach in uh, terms of Dane, Matthias Bo, and uh, Matthias Bo, he knew how to, um, how to challenge Gideon and Sukamulio. I can't remember whether they had a, a winning record. I don't think they had against um, the Minions, but um, they won, They beat them a couple of times. Uh, that was then, this is now. Uh, Bo's job now is to get the best out of his um, charges, uh, Shetty and uh, Ranky Reddy. And whilst they're very talented, um, they've also lost their only previous encounter against uh, Ben Lane and, and Sean Wendy. That was back in 2019 in the uh, Denmark Challenge. So, um, yeah, 
that's uh, that's gonna be uh, interesting and I think if uh, Lane and Wendy uh, want to uh, play a part in this Olympic tournament then why not start on the first match where they take on the uh, number one on the world ranking Sukumulio and Gideon so uh, I still have the Indonesians to uh, top the group uh, comfortably and then uh, the three other pairs they can battle for um, second place and it's difficult not to have uh, Li Yang and Wang Chilin uh, as favorites to take that uh, second place the way they played in um, the way they played in uh, Thailand earlier this year where uh, they won uh, three tournaments they have a 4-0 record against uh, Lane and Wendy but they haven't played Ranky Reddy and Shetty so uh, that could be uh, that could be a very crucial match and uh, as a lot of the other uh, very exciting matches it takes place on the first day of competition <coughs> Uh, the Super Saturday, 24th of uh, July. That is, uh, in my opinion, uh, probably the deciding match for the outcome of the group. I still go with um, the pair from uh, Chinese Taipei. I think they played magnificently in uh, January. Group B in men's doubles also uh, commences with the match that uh, potentially could decide which of the two pairs are progressing to the knockout stage. It's... Um, Vladimir Ivanov, Ivan Sosanov representing the Russian Olympic Committee. They're taking on the Danes, uh, Anas Rasmussen and Kim Astrup. The Russians and the Danes, both former European champions and the Russians, of course, also former All England champions. Uh, that match uh, could very well decide who is going to follow Endo uh, and Watanabe uh, to the uh, knockout uh, phase. Even though Endo and Watanabe are the, um, the seeded pair in this group here, it's actually uh, them who have the worst record head-to-head -head of uh, all the pairs in the group uh, since they are 2 all against the Danes and 1-2 uh, down against the Russians. Uh, Olufoa Opeyore from uh, Nigeria, they haven't played any of the other three pairs and thus only have a, 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 an all-square record against them. So. Uh, even though they have that bad record, Endo and uh, Watanabe, I still have them as the favorites to, to uh, top the group. Uh, they beat the Russians uh, at the All England back in uh, 2020, and they've also beaten the Danes uh, after um, being defeated earlier on in their career. So, um, Japanese favorite to, um, to top the group, and whether it's going to be Ivanov, Sosanov, uh, Rasmus and Astrup, that uh, remains to be seen. It's the first match. Uh, the Russians are a little bit more experienced in being at Olympics than Astrup and, and Rasmussen are. And, and Ivanov has this uh, really big, big uh, hammer of a smash. So maybe that could um, upset the Danes uh, early on in the tournament. Um, that remains to be seen. But they have a fairly convincing record, 6-2. It's been a little while since they've lost to uh, the two players from uh, Russia. So uh, I think that um, Astrup and Rasmussen can progress to the second round, but I also might be biased um, as a Dane, and there might be a little bit of uh, hard in that prediction as well. In Group um, C, there's uh, two clear favorites in my mind. That's the Twin Towers from China, Li Junhui and uh, Liu Chen, as the third seats in the tournament. And then, of course, um, Takeshi Kamura and uh, Keiko Sonoda from uh, Japan. Uh, Mark Lampsfuss and, um, and uh, Marvin Seidel shouldn't be totally uh, dismissed, though, uh, whilst I think uh, Philip Chu and Ryan Chu, who um, got in uh, on the last spot in, in the men's doubles, uh, I, th I don't think they can expect uh, more than uh, the experience here in the, in the group stage. Uh, Lampsfuss and Seidel should, of course, um, hang their hat on the fact that they beat uh, Kamura and Sonora the last time they played them. That was in the uh, Thomas Cup uh, 2018, where later on, uh, Kamura and Sonora, they were split for uh, the final against um, against China. So um, maybe they can uh, cause an upset there. In terms of the head-to-head -head between uh, Li Junhui and Liu Chen, um, I think the last uh, defeat was back in uh, 2015 or so when uh, Kamura and Sonoda last uh, beat the two tall Chinese players. Now, uh, in my uh, predictions here in the doubles discipline, I've um, 
really not been afraid to uh, go with the Chinese. In fact, I think I've favored all Chinese to uh, progress to the knockout stage. And I feel that um, they have the depth in their competition uh, system, in their development system in China to uh, cope with uh, this kind of pandemic. I feel that they've had a chance of um, having exactly the sparring that they wanted for these Olympic Games. And I also feel that um, there's a lot of knowledge so that they know how to prepare and how to peak for these uh, tournaments, even though it's been 16 months since they last played internationally. Group D in men's doubles has been one of the hardest uh, groups to predict, in my opinion. I mean, look at the uh, head-to-heads where the second seeds, Asan and Sechewa, and the three-time world champions, they're down 1-3 in head-to-head against uh, Choi and Seo, but they're up 6-1 against Chia and So, the Malaysians. Uh, and uh, So and, and Chia are up against um, Seo and Choi. It's, it's um, all square, two uh, wins each pair. And then we have the Canadians, Jason Hoshu and Neil Yakura, who hasn't played a lot against them. these three uh, absolute top pairings. Asan and Sechewan, they, um, they, they have a monkey on their back uh, from Rio 2016, where I think they were also the second seeds, but they did manage to progress from uh, group stage, lost to uh, Endo and Hayakawa and lost to Piao Chai and... Uh, and Hong Wei. Now, could the same thing happen here in um, in Tokyo? I think it could, and I actually uh, think it will happen. Uh, I know there's a lot of Indonesians out there disagreeing with me right now, but I just feel that um, you, you can't really neglect uh, Father Time, and I don't see uh, it as an advantage for Asan and Sechewan that uh, the Olympics was postponed uh, by one year. I see it as an advantage for uh, So and Cha, who's had uh, more time to settle in, especially with their new coach, the Indonesian Flandi Lempele. And that's where I feel that uh, that uh, cooperation with uh, Flandi might be able to uh, turn the tides for the Malaysians so that um, they can get a win over Asan and uh, Sechewan. Choi and Seo, um, their record against the Sun and Sechewan looks good on paper, but we must remember that the Sun and Sechewan won their last match uh, back in the uh, World Tour Finals in uh, January 2021. So maybe they've found the formula to uh, defeat these two Koreans, and definitely the, uh, uh, there's a lot of Indonesians that uh, will hope so. I feel it might be uh, difficult for them, and I've um, chosen to go with uh, the Malaysians to uh, upset the Indonesians, and then also um, Choi and uh, Seal as uh, the second pair to qualify from this group. But it's a very, very interesting group, and I'm going to watch all those matches in between these three pairings because that is going to be magnificent badminton, mm-hmm. and then we'll have to see what happens in the end. Here is my uh, picks for... Uh, the players or pairs um, progressing to the uh, group stage in uh, men's doubles. Uh, not a whole lot of surprises in the uh, first three groups, but um, controversial uh, in uh, Group D uh, that um, I'm not uh, placing much faith in uh, Asan and Sechewan to progress to the knockout stage. They uh, they definitely might, will be out to prove me wrong in terms of that. As for the medalists, uh, of course, I have... Um, uh, Gideon and uh, Sukumulio uh, on the podium. Uh, it's very, very difficult to uh, look away from them. Uh, they won the last two tournaments, uh, or the only two tournaments staged here in uh, Musashino Forest Sports Plaza. That was in 2018 and 2019. Lee and Liu, they've done well here uh, as well. Uh, reached the final, uh, I think it was in 2018, and lost to the Minions on that occasion. But they have... Um, they have firepower, and um, that is uh, really, really important in uh, situations like this. And then I've selected Endo and uh, Watanabe. Uh, I feel that um, they've grown in their men's doubles. They're playing really well, um, reigning All England champions. I know that there hasn't been um, competitions in the last 16 months where uh, players from all over the world has been participating, but. I still feel they play some uh, some really, really good men's doubles and um, things might um, be very, very different if it uh, succeeds 
for uh, if if Asan and Sechuan are successful in terms of getting out of uh, the group stage, uh, then they could uh, create all kinds of problems for the um, remaining pairs. But um, so far, this is uh, my pick for the uh, podium in the men's double. Going over the uh, medalist picks in uh, all three categories, uh, I can see that uh, I've made some uh, assumptions and some biases. I've um, made the assumption that China is showing up in uh, good shape here at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, I've selected them to to do well in um, in these games, and I've also um, dismissed age and experience a little bit. Um, I've um, passed on Asan and Sechuan, and I've passed on uh, Go Liu Ying and uh, Chan Peng Sun. I've also passed on. Um, on the uh, former uh, or reigning double world champions Matsumoto and Nakahara so I feel I really stuck my head out here and it might prove uh, totally wrong anyway it's uh, gonna be so good to uh, to finally see uh, badminton at the highest level again at Olympic level so I can't wait for Saturday 24th July when we can stop talking about badminton and actually watching it again. Uh, this is um, the uh, conclusion of my uh, preview for the uh, doubles categories at the uh, Tokyo 2020 uh, Olympic Games and um, if you uh, enjoyed the video please uh, consider giving it a like here below that will help the channel a lot. And you can also subscribe to uh, the channel so that um, you'll get uh, notifications uh, whenever there's uh, new uh, videos up on this channel. So that's all for now and uh, until we uh, meet again, bye for now.